So John, we're going to open the eyelids today. You're about to witness something remarkable. In just a moment, John Ings will discover if he can see again after years of blindness. As I've said to you before, we don't know what we're going to get it and it might take some months to get it. Today there. is the culmination of nine months of planning and effort. I know you want it just as much as I do. The hope is that a revolutionary surgical procedure never attempted before in Australia will restore John's sight. And offer the same opportunity to hundreds of other Australians. For years, this has been John Ng's view of the world. It's like a dirty window. A childhood injury in one eye and a series of more recent illnesses has slowly left him blind. It's like a, a frosted glass, a frosted window on your vision. You want to get up and do things and you know you can't or it's yeah, very risky. John's lost the simple pleasure of working in his garden shed. <laughs> and more than anything, he's missed seeing his wife Berry and his grandchildren as they grow up. Good girl, well done. You, darling. <laughs> I know they're there and I can sense them around me. You've got to ask which one is it, and that gets a bit embarrassing sometimes. <laughs> Facial surgeon Dr Shannon Webber and specialist eye surgeon Dr Greg Maloney are former med school mates using an extraordinary technique for the first time in Australia to restore John's sight. John, can you see any light in there? What they're doing to pull off this feat defies belief fixing blindness with a humble tooth. It is kind of funny, you know, when you say to people that you're restoring somebody's sight with a tooth. It sounds crazy. Yeah. It uh, did sound it's... crazy to us too. <laughs> <laughs> the first time we heard about it. Uh, uh, yes, it is. It's a, it's a it's, bizarre idea. And, yeah. uh, but it's one that works. Facing total blindness as his sight failed, John Ings volunteered to undergo the new procedure here at Sydney Eye Hospital. It's not uncommon after the surgery to achieve 20-20 vision. That's amazing. It is. So somebody who's not been able to see can suddenly see again as a result of this operation. As well as you or I. Hmm. Yeah. The operation has two stages. First, a tooth is removed and a new plastic lens is glued inside it. It's then sewn into the patient's cheek for several months, so tissue will grow around it. A flap of skin, mucous membrane from inside the mouth, is also sewn over the eye. A few months later, in a second operation, the new tooth lens is taken out of the cheek it's sewn over the patient's blind eyeball and covered with the layer of skin, with an opening allowing the new lens to see. In a sense, we're basically just changing the windscreen on the front of the eye so that light can get in. So instead of using a new human lens, you're basically replacing it with a plastic lens that's held in place by a tooth. Exactly right. Correct. The new lens does look confrontingly different from a normal eye, as these pictures of overseas patients who've had the operation show. Are you worried about scaring the grandkids? Not really. <laughs> I'll, I'll have a pink eye with a little, with a little black centre in it. This surgery only suits patients with a specific type of corneal blindness. It's complicated and the stakes are high. There are significant risks involved in this operation. Um, 
there is the chance that the vision or the eye can be lost. It was a risk worth taking? The getting good eyesight back was worth the risk of losing the little bit I had. So what I'm doing here is just lifting the tissue off the selected tooth. In the first part of the operation, Dr Weber extracts a tooth and a section of bone from the patient's jaw. And that'll be used as the bracket for the new lens. Correct. This, this tooth and, and bone that we harvest will, will be what we glue the cylinder into. The tooth's shaped. So we'll just push that in. The new lens is inserted and the whole thing sewn into the patient's cheek. The reason for doing that is that we're relying on the bone that's around the tooth to gain a blood supply and a tissue covering. So then when we bring it up to the eye, we've actually got something to sew the tissue and attach it to, to, get, to anchor it into the front of the eye. A flap of skin from inside the mouth is also sewn onto the eye. There's a nice platform for blood vessels to grow into this tissue. John will now be totally blind for the next three months. So three months later, you cut open that cheek to yes. see whether or not the tissue has grown around the tooth. Correct. Yes. It's like opening a present. Yes. <laughs> Grandad, do you think you're going to be back on my birthday? On the eve of his second operation, John Ings is spending some quality time with his grandson, Sam. Well, if you're going to have a birthday party, I'll have to be home in time, won't I? <laughs> yeah. It's been a harrowing few months for John, struggling with total blindness. How precious is it going to be for you to be able to look at Berry? Ah, yes. It's, I'm looking forward to that, uh, to see how, if she still looks as beautiful as ever. <laughs> Hello, John, and hello, Berry. How are you? Very well, thank you. It's the day of John's second operation, and he's optimistic. I'm expecting when they undo the bandages and so forth, I'll see something. Just how much, time will tell. John's new lens, secured into his tooth, is removed from his cheek. This operation now requires extraordinary skill. John's natural lens has to be removed before the new plastic one can be inserted, leaving his eye completely exposed. So at that moment in the operation where you're literally pulling out the lens of somebody's eye, there's no going back there, Greg, is there? That was how we all felt on the table <laughs> on the day, uh, yes. Now John's new tooth for an eye is sewn onto his eyeball, replacing the old lens. Forgive me for being blunt, if you stuff it up at this point, they're blind forever, aren't they? There's a chance, yeah. yeah. After three days of recovery, it's time for the doctors to test John's new lens for the first time. Today we learn if the operation is a success. Morning, John. Everyone is nervous. How are you? How are you? Before we went in there, terribly nervous yeah. uh, that, that we wanted a result for them so badly, and um, I think we had all fingers crossed. Yeah. John, can you see any light in there? I can see your finger moving. Can you see a finger moving? Yeah. The hand moving? I can see a hand moving, yeah. Excellent. I can see a face. Okay. If you can see a face, we might bring another face in for you to have a look at, okay? Okay. Somebody here you might recognise, John.
ください I don't think there was a dry eye in the house. That's probably the first time I've shed a tear in my uh, medical career. The moment John saw his wife was uh, very satisfying, very, very gratifying, touching. and uh, very, we were very relieved. It's two months now since John's sight was restored. He's a different man. Oh, I've been a hell of an improvement, yeah. Without the glasses, uh, I, can, I can get around. I can walk around. I've walked around the block this morning. John's much happier. Oh, yeah, nice strong one to wear. And to his wife Berry's great relief, much more independent. He's improving every day, and his doctors are impressed by his progress. How does it feel to be able to give somebody back the gift of sight? I think there's a it's... natural part of every, every human that wants to help other people. Um, you know, this is the best gift that, or feeling that I've had. Yeah. You know, one of the ultimate gifts you could give someone is their sight back, and we're, we're both extremely pri privileged and, and honoured. You take your sight for granted, and you've, you've got to lose it and then regain it, I think, to, uh, to really appreciate it. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.